Welcome to Burt Life. We're doing a maintenance. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to do a proper maintenance on a residential system. Hello, this is Jana. Hey, this is Burt with Kalos. Hi, how are you? Good. Are you ready for us now? We're all ready. Okay, great. So I'm probably about 10 minutes away. But when you first show up to a maintenance, your first impression is going to be how that customer sees the whole company. A key thing is actually being courteous and professional. Like, don't walk across the front of the lawn. Shoe covers, put them on your feet before you go inside. And then another key step is actually communicating with the customer. Do you have any issues? Do you see any problems? First thing we're going to do uh, this time of year, because it's fall, we're going to turn it in heat and check out how the heat works. Now, Nest has a lockout in that they don't bring on the heat strips unless it's actually cold outside, and we're not gonna change that function. We're gonna test our heat pump, and then I'll just uh, force on the heat strips at some point to actually call that. First things first, we'll just turn on heat. Maintenances are really important for the customer and for us. For us, because it keeps our relationship with the customer, and we can actually um, show up, they see our faces often, they connect us to their system so when big things, big things go wrong, we are their people. As we're getting ready to start our maintenance, it's important to just kind of get an overview, overview visually of everything. So you check out where everything's going to be outside. If there's any unusual stuff like our carpet is kind of buried in the, the gravel and the insulation looks like it's starting to get tore up. We have this really ugly wire slice here. These are all things, points of interest that we're going to have to look out for when we're doing our maintenance. I've already seen two dead lizards in there. Let me get this guy out of our way. This maintenance is already getting interesting because we have heat calling inside at that thermostat, but heat pump not actually running right now. I'm just gonna uh, check real quick to make sure that our heat strips are calling. Uh, they should be. And I have 23 amps on my heat strips. So that would be the equivalent of a 5kW. And it looks like that's exactly what we have. So we have a 5kW heat strip in the system, which is small for this tonnage. Backup heat, 5 k put this at. So this is a 5 ton. Already we're noticing a couple problems here. Um, Code-wise, you actually need the ability for your backup heat to be able to keep the size of this house and 5 PW is not enough. Okay, it says zero volts. That's right, checking to ground is the only way to actually check safety. If you've got zero volts to ground, then you're safe to touch because you are ground. The other visual check that needs to be done is actually to check our contactor to see if we have pitted ends. And honestly, that contactor looks pretty clean. My process for doing the maintenance is this time of year, show up, check heat. We did that, the heat's working, we confirmed heat strips. Are working we've burnt off any dust that are on them heat pump is actually running it's hot out so i'm not like testing refrigerant and heat i just want to make sure the reversing valve switches i want to make sure that it actually runs without pumping down on the the uh, heat mode txv and i'm good at that point with checking heat we'll do our refrigerant checking in cool mode this is actually Joel's van he's just about to move into his own van so we're at the final stages i'm riding with him for training this is not my van which is why it looks so beautiful he has a nice organized maintenance bucket it's just a bucket with some of the cleaners we use and a jug for flushing water an empty jug our vacuum maintenance stuff's quick to grab what we're using for our cleaners is Viper on the evaporator and inside. This is self-rinse from, from Viper. If the condenser is really bad, or really clogged, we're gonna bust this out and use it with some form of a foam or a pump sprayer on the condenser to clean that. The way I like to do a maintenance is all of the cleaning and power off checks first. Capacitor, power off check, cleaning, the condenser coils, evaporator, drain, all of the cleaning out of the way. And that way, when we go to test the system, we're working one, on a clean system, but two, having the final steps of the maintenance be actually checking the equipment means that more technicians are not gonna make the easy mistake of, oh, I, I tested everything, then I checked capacitor, left the wires off, or then I cleaned the drain, left a breaker off, or then I filled the trap and accidentally filled a, the float switch. And because testing will be our final step in this process, then uh, we can be confident that we're walking away from something that we haven't missed anything stupid. Part of a maintenance well done is always taking off the top, cleaning out whatever leaves and crap we have down in here. I'm gonna just okay.
when you take the top off the condenser, you can actually check the wires and make sure they're not rubbing on copper. Really common issue. Tie that up, insulate it, the copper, wrap your wire to that if that's an issue. You can check your compressor terminals. If it's not a plug, you actually have terminals there and you need to make sure they're actually look good, they're not rusted out. Uh, that'll tell you about the condition of the compressor, make sure they're actually tight. The other reason for taking it off is so that you can properly clean the condenser, which is washing it from the inside out. The real best way to do this is to actually clear out the very bottom, so down here. To actually start by clearing out the drains of your system, so that as you're cleaning the water has somewhere to go. Uh, on the condenser coils, if they're this clean already, which they are relatively clean, I'm not going to be using any cleaners on them. I will actually use cleaners on the condenser when there's a lot of dirt or hard impacted stuff or a lot of corrosion and I'm going to try to like uh, wash off or not corrosion, oxidization uh, that I'm going to try to be washing off. The condenser's clean, that's how it should look when you're done. Really important, when you're taking fans off, these actually need to come down through their track. They don't get pinched here, like if you're working with a train or a Linux, they actually have a channel for them to fit into, that you slide them into. Condenser's done as far as cleaning goes and checking everything visually, noting anything that needed to be quoted. We won't be back here until it's time to check our charge. I'm gonna put, as a minimum, when I do a maintenance, I'm doing flushing two gallons of water through my pan, and that will get all of this section as well, help that be flushed out, and then I'm going to dump two gallons of water down the service port directly. You can usually get a little bit more force to push uh, stuff through the drain line by dumping through the service port there with a the funnel. So two gallons in the pan, two gallons in the service port as a minimum. And then at that point, I will be checking the vacuum. Open the top of the vacuum, look at the water. Is it clean? Is there still chunks in there? If there's chunks, let's keep going. Let's keep flushing this drain out. If it's clean, then four gallons of water is fine. Okay, visual inspection is really important on the inside of the equipment too. I'm gonna to be looking in my blower wheel, see if I have dust or dirt build up. I might need to quote pulling that out and cleaning that. Side panels for stuff, dirt to clean, uh, mold, mildew. I mean, uh, growth, black growth, with little white pores on it. And then uh, filter, we replace that as part of our maintenance. You can see their system doesn't pull in a lot of dirt. Uh, this has been here since August and we're in December. That's not too bad. Uh, we'll be looking at the evaporator coil. And if I can't get a good view that way, then you can turn on the phone, take a video if it's really dirty, turn on the phone, take a video of your coil. You can also show the customer that. Part of my process is the green evap self-rinse uh, from Viper. And if the side panels are dirty, what I'll do is just spray just a thin, sort of fog layer, and then spray the whole coil down. This is pretty clean, so this is really just a light self-rinse application. If it's a little more dirty, then I'll take off the top, and I'll actually just pour along the top like this, and that will then rinse now all the way through. And so this is a very mild mixture of evap rinse, uh, self-rinse from Viper. Very mild, it's good for your coil. You don't want to use any cleaners on here. It's not specifically designed for a coil, it doesn't say self-rinse, and the reason I say that is because you want to make sure that if you don't rinse all of the cleaner off yourself, that just the system running and the condensation, it's going to be fine rinsing that off itself. So it should be self-rinse, it should be designed for an evaporator, or don't put it on there. I'm going to wipe down panels in here, everything that I sprayed on. Then the inside of my panel doors. Often these can be pretty filthy. We'll spray them off, wipe them down. If the insulation is starting to come off, then we can spray glue that down for really bad situations, use some silver tape and actually pull it over and secure that. Something to always look for on your maintenance. A visual check on here, I'm looking for things like we have this thin copper tube or this one is actually aluminum. And is it rubbing on anything that it could wear through and actually cause a rub out? So I'm looking for those areas. Also the way this is run, the same thing. I'm looking at my wires, how are they run down? This is pretty good, tucked behind here. We're not gonna have a problem with rub outs there. All my connections up top, are they clean and tight? Are they set somewhere like this is fine. Sometimes they're in a really tight box and you can see they're rubbing out in the air edges. So checking for that is important. We have another connection point right here. Let's look at all your electrical connection points and check them to make sure they're actually solid and clean. That concludes the cleaning and the power off section. So next, all we need to do is turn the equipment on in cool mode and do a really, really detailed checking of the refrigerant. 
uh, air temperature split, making sure this system actually is running the way it should. Looks like we already have an access hole for checking our air split. When I turn the system on, I check the flow switch to make sure that actually opening that up kills power to the system. So I'll run inside, confirm the thermostat uh, has shut off or that my condenser has shut off. Or I can wait here for an extra 30 seconds for the blower delay to make sure that turns off. Closing out your call. You walk around, you're going to inspect that all the panels are closed, everything's cleaned up, your refrigerant caps are actually put back on. You need to clean up anything that you've messed up. So leaving a really clean area. And then try to find ways that you can improve it from where you found it. So like wiping down the platform. We got dirt or dust in there. Cleaning off the face of the condenser or the face of the air handler. Things that the customer can actually see that, oh, this, this equipment now looks a little bit cleaner. Because you could be a really, really good tech, technically. But the customer's never gonna know that. All they're gonna be able to know that you did a good job is your interaction with them, and how clean and sharp things look. So remember that. Stuff like filling holes in the return where you've taken your temperature probe. Important last step. You're gonna make sure your system's all running before you leave, and you're gonna make sure that your unit is draining. Look at that gorgeous drain. A job well done. Okay, so now we're actually testing refrigerant. Our coils did get wet, so we're gonna have a minimum of like 20 minutes runtime during this testing process. I'm gonna take that time to clean up the job site, make things look nice, take that time to uh, fill out the invoice, have a discussion with the customer about added uh, things that we noticed that need to be taken care of, something additional to the maintenance that we need to charge for uh, while the system is balancing out. Some of the technicians um, that I train, they just need a little extra push, like uh, they drag their feet or they go slower, and, and that's fine. You just have to learn how to push them. It helps to inspire and encourage you. ever see me walking that slow, you can shoot me. I went through uh, all the details uh, that we found. Uh, the 5K heat, the wires, with the disconnect location. Talked to her about uh, how those could be potential problems. Offered the solutions needed to actually take care of that. I mentioned to her what you always want to do with the customer, that I replaced the filter, I dated it. So when you're thorough at the end of the job, even though you've finished your work and you have this feeling inside of you, like I gotta get out of here, slow down, talk with your customer, make that part of the process, close in a way that, again, they feel listened to and they can see that you're detailed. Bert, um, yeah, you can be pretty pushy most of the time, all the time, actually. Mostly discouraging, sometimes encouraging, mostly when he's not being discouraging, but uh, it, it's hard. It's, it's, a hard. it's a hard job to work with him. You almost done? Joel, where's the funnel? It's just all about being in the right place at the right time. To impress your trainer. If you find a way to constantly improve the system, constantly improve yourself when you're on maintenances, then you're going to enjoy them a lot more. They can be really boring, they can be long, and they can feel like, hey, I do this over and over and over again. But if you're actually actively trying to find a way to improve anything you come up against, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.